All right, in this uh, set of instructional videos, well, in, in general, what we're going to be talking about is how to limit your data based on certain issues, if you will. And what I want to do is talk about a couple of different options, and we're going to first look at this in the Arc Map environment, and then I'll open up Arc Pro in the next video, and you can, if you're an Arc Pro person, you can see the same idea. But what we're going to deal with is the idea of selecting features by location, selecting features by an attribute, splitting content within an, an area of interest, and then clipping. And so we're going to go through each one of these and we're going to kind of talk about what we've got. Let me show you the scenario and then we'll go into possible ways of dealing with it. So here we have um, the data we've been working with. And so again, we've created bare points um, and they have their counties assigned to them. So the points actually have where they are in terms of the counties as well as their X and Y. What we're interested in is what type of land use these bare mortalities have occurred in and we're only interested in a subset of counties and so we're really only interested in this northwest water management district area where we have really good data on, on several levels and so what we really want to do then is limit the bears our bear locations only to those that correspond with the land cover that we have, land use that we have. And we're also only interested in the counties that uh, correspond with that land cover. So we need to kind of shrink our data. And again, there's a number of different ways of going at that, and we're going to look at that uh, now. All right, so here we are in our ArcMap environment. And again, what we want to do is constrain our data, kind of limit it. And the first way we could do that is to simply do what we call selection options. And in ArcMap, selection is interactive, but it can also be done as a tool. So here, if I click on selection, what you'll notice is I can select by either attribute or by location. Well, for example, I want only those bears that are within our Northwest Water Management District counties. That's one possibility. So I'm going to use the select by location. So I'm going to say select features from bear count by bears, my point data, that intersect. Okay. okay. So again, target feature, select features from bears that intersect. And for right now, because again, it's a really complicated data set, that land use is actually vector data. I'm going to kind of avoid that and I'm going to go with the Northwest Water Management District counties. And I notice I'm going to say select that intersect the source features. And I'm going to hit apply. And so you'll notice now, very quickly, I have only those points that fall within that. It's an easy thing to do. The next step in this then, though, remember these are just selected. These are not a new feature class. And so if I wanted just these, all I have to do is then right click on them and again export the data. And so what I will get, and I'm going to put this back into my results, and I'm going to call it Black Bears Northwest Water Management District. I'll save that. Now what you're going to notice when I'm going to say yes, I want to add that. is that these are, and again, this is why I didn't use that land cover component, is that it's very slow to add. But now I can get rid of my overall bear data. And I have the subset. So I've selected by location in this way. Now, it is, it's worth noting that I can also do this, quite simply, by attribute. So. One of the things that you're going to notice in this is that, for example, I'm going to turn off these uh, the land use. It's taking slow to, to uh, load. If I look at the counties, as an example, I have the county that is Calhoun and Escambia. I could also select simply by that. And so I could go back to my bears, and then I'm going to go to my selection and I'm going to select by attribute, 
and I'm going to say select from bears where county is equal to, and I can get my unique values here, Eskim, I'm going to go Calhoun, or, and I'm going to do an or here, or, and again, I have to first state the field, so I've said the field and its attribute is equal to Calhoun, or where county is equal to Escambia. And I'm going to hit apply, and you'll notice that now I've got the bears here and the bears here. So I can either use an attribute field to do this, or I can use a location. The other point I want to note here is that we can do this iteratively, that is multiple times. So you'll notice that I have these selected, and again, what I'm going to now go in, and I'm going to do another one. And so you'll notice I'm going to close this down right now. And so I've got those, and I say, oh, I want to add another county. I want to get a little bit more to it. So I'm going to go back to selection. Again, select by attribute. And this time, I'm going to say add to my current selections where, and I'm going to clear this off, county is equal to, I'm going to get my unique values, and I'm going to go down to Gulf. And I'm going to hit apply. And now you'll notice that I've added additional ones here. Remember that in any situation like this, once I've done my selection, if I wanted to make this permanent, I would simply right click and I would export my data. Relatively simple idea. Now, the last one that I'm going to do here is I'm going to clear my selections. You'll notice right up here there's a clear. And I can click that. And now um, I only, I have all of my data there. I'm going to zoom back out to this so we can see it all. Now, the other thing, though, that I want to do, and I really do want to work with on this one, is I'm interested in only those bears that actually fall where I have land use. And this is going to be a little bit slower. So, But I can do the same thing. Again, select by location my bears that intersect my land use. And again, I'm going to hit apply. Now, this is going to run a little bit slowly because we have so much information in this. You'll notice how many selection envelopes have to be done. But you'll notice in this case, even though I can't see that land use layer, it's, it's reduced it a little bit further. And so now I'm going to do the last, and I'm going to export this so that I have just the land use bears. I'll make that, don't have my spaces, it's always a bad idea. Okay, so now I have a new set that's only those, and I'm going to get rid of these. So now I have my new subset. So, what we've done now is selection options. The alternative to this is a form of clipping. And so in clipping, what we are doing is we're going to take and we are only interested in a subset of our land use. In other words, we want a very small portion of it. And in clipping, again, clipping is a way of taking one piece of information and clipping out others. So in this case, we're going to be doing a couple of different things. We're going to go through a couple of steps here to get to a single set of data. And you'll notice here that I have Calhoun County has two of our students in it. And what I'd like to do then is I'm going to use that county, Calhoun County, to clip everything else. So here's how it works. Clipping. I'm going to go into my counties, and I'm going to go into their properties first. This is what's called a, a definition query. And I'm going to say I want, I'm going to click again into my properties, definition query, in my query builder I'm going to say county is equal to, and again I'm going to get the unique values because I don't remember how to spell it, I'm going to click Calhoun. I'm going to click OK and apply. Now you'll notice that I have only that county here and we get rid of the rest of our other counties here. And now what I want to do is clip this land use so that I only have the land use that is co-occurrent with that area. 
Okay, so again, clipping is in a toolbox. And I'm going to say I want to clip. And my input features are going to be my land use. And I'm going to clip. Now, this is a very important distinction. Notice that I did a definition query before I did the clip. I'm going to select clip features and I'm going to use my counties. If I use, please note that here, I'm using the active layer in the map. If I use that, the definition query is applied. If I were to actually use it from here, it would use all of the counties. So we want to use the one that's active in the map because that will allow us to apply our definition query. Again, I'm going to write this out to my lab five results and I'm going to call this Calhoun land use. I'm going to save that and I'm going to hit OK. Now the clip will take a few minutes. It's a little bit slower process because we have so much data here, but you'll see it when it's done. Okay, so our clip is done, and now you'll notice what we have. We have a subset of our Calhoun land use. And again, I'm going to turn everything else off so that we can see now that we now have, again, we've, we've reduced our points. We've now reduced our land use. And so even now, again, this is a very complex data set, but we've gotten it down to a manageable size. The last thing that we want to do is, again, limit our bears to those that co-occur with this area. So, again, now we want to reduce our bears. Now, the bears, uh, because they're point files, can be done, it, we can do this a couple different ways. Certainly, we could do select by location. Again, I can go select by location. I want bears that co-occur with Calhoun land use and I have all my bears now, or I could use the clip again and clip the bears by either the land use or the counties that have the definition query for Calhoun applied. But in this way, we now have, and again, if we select like this, what I just did, remember that what we would next have to do is take the selected bears and export them. If you use the clip, you don't have to do that. So, in the end, what we would have, and I've already done this, I'm going to kind of add my data back here. Um, if we look at our results, let me just get to my results here. And we have, I've already done Calhoun Bears. And so what we now have in the end, I'm going to get rid of all of the other things here. Um, we don't need any more of this stuff. And what we really have now is a quite important set of data, and that is a, a set of data that shows just where our bears are. I'm going to make them a little bit more visible here. There are bears within Calhoun County, and we have only Calhoun County's land use. Now we can begin our analysis. Okay, that's it for this lab.